Kitchen's How Tuesday, episode number 37. I'm excited tonight because I, I'm cooking something tonight I've never cooked. I'll be transparent as hell. I've never cooked fennel in my life, but I hear it goes really, really well with what we're doing tonight. So we're going to cook some roasted fennel, which is the super easiest thing in the world. A very delicious kind of root. Kind of resembles like a big onion or some celery. It's easy to trim up. You see it in your grocery store all the time. The top kind of looks like dill. It does look like dill. That's what I And believe it or not, was. all of that is edible and usable to flavor stuff. We're going to save these stalks and maybe put them in a stock or something like that, kind of make a unique little thing. We're going to use some seasonal blueberries. On Primetime Kitchen, you hear us talking about things are in season. Yeah. I also have had a couple people ask me, you know, hey, Jim, I hear you talking about cooking with fruit and savory food. So that's what we're going to do tonight. We're going to make our crispy pork chops that we've made before. We're going to get them nice and brown. Uh, we're going to make them nice and crispy. We have some beautiful chops here, courtesy of Publix. They're nice and thick, which I love. Nice big serving. And you can do these with thinner chops. You can do them with bone-out chops. You can do this with a tenderloin, to be quite honest with you. You can easily do this dish with everything. This little blueberry is going to be a blueberry sage. Got a little balsamic vinegar in there. It's going to be a beautiful little sauce. The sweet, savory crunch is going to go great with our, our fennel. It has kind of a really mild licor ric licorice. Aka! Aka! Small stroke. What's My happening? A uh, little licorice flavor in there. So we're going to do that tonight. It's going to be fun. It we're drinking some fun. wine. We're drinking some beer. Our air conditioning is completely gone. So we don't have to worry about any of that. We're going to be sweating our butts off. We woke up today and found out our AC is out. And the guy cannot make it until tomorrow. So we're going to sweat and cook. Oh, I'm Jim. It. That is my wife, Tori. Hey, hey. And uh, tonight I'm actually drinking a local beer as well. Uh, this is called Cloud Chaser. Okay. From our buddies over at whom <laughs> he's just go ahead and get another one on deck. Mm -hmm. uh, from our buddies over at Crooked Can, whom we love. We do love Crooked Can. If you haven't been out there in a winter garden to visit the brewery, the brewery's like in a food hall. So not only do you get the incredible beer on tap there, fresh, delicious, you get to walk down there and get some great coal-fired pizzas and wings. They have a deli there, sushi, a chocolater, and even a coffee maker there as well. So it's a cool spot, which I highly recommend if you're on the west side. And actually even worthy of a trip. So go check them out. That's a Crooked Can Brewery out in uh, Winter Garden. Oh, uh, Tanya, let us know how Ready Player One was. Uh, Jack saw it. Jack Bradshaw, my yeah. uh, partner at uh, the Jim Culver Show. Yeah. Uh, he loved it. He thought it was great. Tons of fun. We're definitely going to go see that. Yeah, that we sounds we have to see fun. Shape of Water still. What's up, Palatka? Pretty far behind. It's like a time warp. There's Palatka in front of the camera and Palatka... I like P-Town in front of the camera and in behind the, the camera. No yeah. big deal. Uh, let's see what else. We have some cool stuff coming up. I don't know if you uh, checked out our Facebook page, Primetime Kitchen. Uh, of course you have if you're here. But if not, uh, we're doing a live How Tuesday in just a few weeks uh, with Gloria Gaynor. Do you remember her from the disco years of I Will Survive, not to yeah. mention many other hits, and uh, just a wonderful human being. We're going to visit her in South Carolina, and while we're there, we're going to do a special edition of How Tuesday from her kitchen, and she will be on the show with us. And it is going to be surreal, but we're going to cook something good. Uh, I think you'll fall in love with Gloria and this new part of her life uh, with her new charity called I Will Survive. And uh, by the way, you can go online and find that as well. Uh, she's a great woman, and we really, really have uh, enjoyed this new friendship with her. She's a wonderful girl. We love Gigi. So we have we Massachusetts. We have Jacksonville. Right. We have Kathy. We have Mike. We have Mark. We have a bunch of people. We about ready to cook. And they said, hey, Tori and company. Hey, Tori and company. So what does that mean uh, about you? I don't know. Okay. I mean, I am the, I'm the last thought. You're, you're, huh? You're the company. I am the company. All right, let's do this. <laughs> let's cook some fennel. Because we're going to roast this fennel off, so we want to give it some time in the oven. Remember, it'll be able to, like, we can do whatever we want. Just yeah. Once this is in the oven, we can do our thing. Because the chops are going to brown up pretty quick in our cast iron pan. We've seen that. They're also going to go in the oven. We can start making our blueberry sauce, which is not going to take that long at all. But let's go ahead and take our time to get going. Fennel. Yes. This is what I've learned about fennel. So fennel, like I said, it looks like this bulb. You can see it. Okay. It's got these layers. What you want to do first is you want to take these stalks off. Got it. All right. Set these to the side because we want to kind of keep those because we can do some cool stuff with them. I would think this is what I would want to eat. No. No? All right. Well, I mean, you can eat it. I mean, like I said, it's very edible, but it's like different. They tell you to like, like trim the stalks, even put everything like in soups or stock or whatever. So we're going to trim this bulb here. At the bottom. So we're it's, making fennel right yeah, now. Yeah, it looks like a, it looks kind of like a big celery root. Yeah. That's so what they tell you when you buy this stuff is look for these discolorations on the outside. Keep them uh, going there, Tori. Okay. You can actually even smell that 
The minute you cut it, let me, let me, let me. I want to smell it. Oh, yeah. wow. It's got that great. It smells like a tree. Yeah, like licorice. Yeah. It smells like licorice a little bit. So we have some good looking leaves here. Yep. So we just kind of want to go and make sure that all the little areas that, um, that we need are, that may have a little discoloration or whatever. We kind of want to just get those gone. This one actually is in pretty good shape. And a lot of times what they'll do is they'll even take off this outer layer like that. And set it to the side again. Still usable. Like an onion. Yeah. And then all we're going to do, check yep. it out. We're going to come right down the middle. And see this little notch right here? Yeah. Just want to run a knife there and there. And we want to get that little notcher right there out of there. Why is it like? It's hard. Oh, okay. It's not going to cook as well. Okay. I, mean, it, I don't think it's going to, it ain't going to, you know, it's like you're not going to get poisoned. And then we actually want to split that right down the center again. Happy Tuesday, Katrina. So if you're just tuning in, we're going to make our crispy pork chops uh, with our, uh, now we've done this before, by the way, I think on the third episode, we made this kind of pork chop. Well, we didn't do crispy. I think we just did pan seared. Oh, did we really? Yeah, okay. we didn't do crispy. Now see, we, we're going to get a lot of that because that one fennel only gets us that much. Mm -hmm. And this stuff really isn't that expensive. I and mean, it really isn't. So you can buy this stuff and China, again, we talk about changing it up in the kitchen. That's what we want to do. So I would be so scared to buy that. Why? Well, number one, I don't cook. <laughs> that's a... Uh... So, that's number one. <laughs> but number two, I'm telling you, I would have eaten this. <laughs> so, again, we're going to go ahead and take and be proactive and take that out, outer layer there. Okay. We're going to split this right down the middle. We're going to take our knife. We're going to notch this little center core piece out. Get that right out of there. And don't worry about these leaves falling off. Look, they're going to roast and cook just like the others. Now, look, if you cut these... It's not Taco Tuesday, buddy. Yeah, it's not Taco Tuesday. It's How Tuesday. <laughs> and they kind of, the leaves kind of come apart. Don't worry, because we're actually about to toss this in some, uh, in some olive oil and a little bit of garlic, right? Man, that smells like licorice. Yeah, it's great though, man. I love that because it's really, really gonna go well. I got excited about this. The blueberries are gonna be perfect with this. Yeah, that's cool. So this is a good, good example here. See that little browning area there? Yeah. If you didn't want to, if you didn't want to do it, you could actually just come here with your potato peeler. Oh, that's cool. And just take that right off there so you don't want any of those, those spots there. Now, I have to tell you, from everything I've read and seen and talked to people about eating this stuff, that doesn't really affect the flavor, like, much. Okay, we it's just got a bunch of new viewers, so okay. let's talk about what we're making tonight. Okay, we're doing our crispy pork chop. Okay. Which is our pan-fried pork chop with some panko. We're going to go through the breading process again, like we've shown you guys a couple times. We're going to cook them in our cast iron skillet with a little bit of butter and olive oil. And then we're going to throw them in the oven to finish the temperature, which should be internal, like 160, 45, or whatever. We cook ours about medium. These have a bone, so I'm going to cook them a little bit more. Because hey, I don't Marilyn. want you to get next to that bone and uh, get a little scary if it's pink. That's we cool. Don't, we don't want to do that. So we're going to, again, we're going to notch her. My knife is sharper than ever. I really have to be careful. All yeah, right. it does taste, it does smell like licorice. I don't know what it tastes like, but it smells like licorice. Apparently, it's got that faint thing. But this is going to be perfect, though, guys. I'm telling you, with this, the balsamic and everything from the, from our... Blueberry sauce is going to really go well with it. It's going to look great on the plate, too. Well, what are you drinking again? Cause... I'm drinking Cloud Chaser from Crooked Can Brewery out in Winter Garden. What am I drinking? You're drinking that Kendall Jackson Reserve Pinot Noir. You're damn right I am. And it's really good wine, you know? It is good wine. Uh, by the way, we have a couple other things. We want to thank the guys over at Wassie's Meats. They're awesome people. Mm -hmm. And they throw a little party every April called the Sunshine State <laughs> Egg Fest. What are you looking for? <laughs> and, by, and by little party, I mean a 5,000 person uh, melee of deliciousness on the Big Green Egg. And what day is that? April 28th. It's a Saturday. Tori and I are going to be out there. We're taking the RV. We're taking our RV out. Friday. And we're going to go out there and stay the entire weekend. And we're going to cook our butts off. Yep. And we honestly can't wait because this is a really fun event. And if you've ever considered pulling the trigger on a big green egg, this really is a must event for you. And here's why, because you can actually taste the best versatility in one spot of this thing. We talk about it all the time. People cook cobblers in them, pizzas, whatever you want to do. I mean, seriously, the, the sky's the limit. And this is a place that really brings that home because the, the egg is just really an amazing, amazing implement cooking machine. Also, too, guys, if you like this video, um, that would be awesome. Yeah. Like and share. A little so salt. We do love the love. We do love the love. Thank you guys very much. So all we have in here with our fennel, fennel bulbs, which are trimmed, a little core is taken out. We have some salt, pepper, and garlic. Okay. All right, we're going to cover this a little bit of olive oil. I think I say K more when I'm drinking wine. Maybe that's the case. I mean, I don't care. 
but are you care enough to bring it up? I do. I, I kind of obsess a little bit. Pick it people up. pick on me, I'm like, yeah, you're probably right. So we're gonna toss this fennel. Way to go, Dirty Gem. I'm doing. Look at that. Look at that action. Right, right onto our cookie sheet. Spread these fools out. Do they like blossom? Like, no, no, they're they just gonna get up? turned brown okay. and just get that real nice. And this is gonna fill your house up with a really beautiful roasted vegetable smell. Well, it's gonna fill our house up with heat. And it is Africa's <laughs> hot in here right now already. Now, 350. Now, if you're doing 350, make sure you put them in early. It's gonna take 30, 45 minutes to get them done. So what they really kind of suggest is cooking this in that 400, 425 range. I don't want to do that because I'm cooking chops and I don't want my chops in a 400 degree oven because I, I don't want them to over brown once I get my brown in there. It's okay to be a little over brown. It's fine to be over brown, you're right, but it's not going to be good for our food. Oh, okay. And I see what you're trying. My you know what it is good for. Tori, I do. For UPS what? trucks? And delicious food. What's their thing? Go brown? Yeah, go brown. 100%. <laughs> mm. All right, so let's go ahead and get this cooking too. So into our little saucepan here, we have one little container of blueberries. Now, uh, these are coming into season now. So you're going to have uh, access to these. And they're, they won't be that, because these things can get expensive out of season. Like, you know, I'm serious. <laughs> Marissa is at Texas Roadhouse uh, watching us while she's eating dinner. <laughs> so we're going to put these blueberries on and we're going to let them get a little warm. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take our potato masher okay. and we're going to break them down a little bit because believe it or not, the juice that comes out of these, we may add a little bit of water, but the juice that come, comes out of these are really is what's going to cook down and create our kind of syrupy sauce. Yes. So what do you use to thicken that? Are we thickening this? We're going to cook all the water out of it and thicken it that way. Now, usually, sometimes, if you get a sauce like this or you're making like a compote and you put too much water, which is almost always the case, really, when you're making compotes, it's no more than a few tablespoons of water. People are like, why well, you cover it? You, mm, you really don't. You don't have to because it's going to cook down and sprue. It's going to break apart pretty quickly. But we are going to put a tiny bit of water. Okay. Just that much. We're gonna let those start cooking down. Now, see our butter because this pan is so crazy hot. Butter. Ah, uh, butter. Gotta have butter in your pan if you want to get that good brown, guys. I know that a lot of people freak out about the calories with butter. We don't. That's obvious. But I promise you. Yeah. It's it's been pretty <laughs> obvious lately that we aren't uh, calorie counters. Ooh. All right. So we got some good butter there. And don't worry about it being too much. I mean, the, this breading is gonna soak it up a little bit. You'll be fine. Kim okay. wants to know how you know all this. What's that? Kim wants to know how, how do you know like what you're doing? Because like been... is it like a standard? Well, I mean that's a really good question. So if you if it, is it a standard uh, for how you cook? So you know that if you cook something like something else, then it should. Yeah, I mean honestly, that's a very good question. Um, so uh, like when you roast meats, there's an internal temperature. We talk about the importance of a um, of a meat thermometer. I've just been cooking a really long time. To be honest with you, I can just put my thumb, and I'm not a pro. So I don't have to worry about sitting at a, a, a plate that doesn't have the right temperature, you know? I don't really have to worry about that happening. So I can kind of wing it. I just learned how to wing it really well. But you know, the cooking temperature thing is something you'll just get used to. What I am learning more than anything now is how different flavors blend together. Like I'm in that part of my life where I'm learning how my spice rack, what I've used it for for many, many years, I'm, I'm not even using a tenth of the ability of that thing with all the spices I have to create new flavors. And that happens in cooking a lot. You get into those ruts where you start making the same thing over and over and over again. You really don't want to do that. You want to always kind of branch out and make sure that you come up with new stuff. And this fennel, to me, guys, tonight is a perfect example. I've never made this before. I thought fentanyl was illegal. Did you steal that joke from somebody in that? I did. Then you have to say it. <laughs> no, if I don't If you wanna. steal a joke from somebody, you have to say that is terrible. Why do you use Terrible. why do you use uh, butter and olive oil at the same time? Okay, olive oil. Okay, so butter has uh, uh, what they call it. It's got a really low burn point. We don't call it butter here. We call it butter. Butter, butter has a really low burn point. So what happens is you get that butter will actually burn and turn that bitter brown color, which you don't want. It's not really a nice flavor if you if you cook it too long. We're gonna put a little bit of brown sugar in these. Because it's going to go really well with our balsamic glazing for dinner. 
You can see that's already cooking, right? Yep. Are you going to see these all your bowl? I, I did. Did we not see it in there? No, you did. All right. Uh, I'm actually just going to look at the oh, wow. juice already coming out. See it? When they heat up like that, it's just easier to get the juice out. You got to remember, they're already going to break down anyway. And we want them kind of broken down, you know? So we're going to leave that right there and put it on medium. And now the great thing about that, we're going to put a little bit of... Now, this is balsamic reduction. I just don't have any balsamic vinegar. I thought I did. I do not. So this little reduction will be fine. I'm just going to use a little less of it than I normally would. Here's the great thing. I can add that back in. Sure. If I don't think it has enough of that, boom, add a little bit. Because it doesn't really matter if that cooks. Actually, you almost don't want it to cook out because it'll even get more balsamic -er. In other um, words, it'll get sweeter and more balsamic vinegar. That's like. pretty much not a word. No, it's a completely mm -hmm. not a word. <laughs> now, the sage part of this. A lot of people ask me about herbs. Like, you know, what do I do with herbs? Do you use fresh or do you use dry? Really, to be honest with you, dry herbs really aren't the worst thing in the world. People are like, oh, I would never use dry, only fresh. But there are plenty of recipes. Well, we that, ain't bougie, yeah, so that, <laughs> we'll use some damn dry herbs. Where dry herbs actually are great for a recipe. I'm going to use fresh here because I do want that flavor to pop and sage like you learned earlier. The minute you took this out of the out of thing, this is it genuinely... It smelled a little bit like weed. I ain't even trying to lie it, about that. This is one of the winners. And, of course, guys, if you're making sage and you have some pork, you're going to be just fine. Uh, because it, it goes very well together. These leaves are this beautiful velvet, and all it takes is one little sniff, and Tori's right, it does smell a tiny bit like <laughs> So we're gonna make a little, a little chiffonade. So you wanna do this little technique here? A chiffonade is where you take, and you do this with basil a lot, where you put the leaves stacked on top of each other. Then you just kinda roll them up into a roll. Take your knife, and kinda run across the leaf. You'll make these little pinwheels, and then when you pull them apart like that, you make these great little things. Now, I want it like this, because when it still cooks out, when I serve my plate, I'm gonna have these little strings of sage running through my blueberry sauce. And it's great, but we're gonna wait and add that in a little bit. I don't wanna add my herbs so I early. I just felt like you were in the club in the 90s. So early, no, early. Anyway, going back hands. to the, uh, the egg vest, that day, if you decide to buy an egg, it will be the best price you can get all year. And if you want an egg now, you're for sure Go on to Wassi's website, that's wassis.com, W-A-S-S-I-S.com, and sign up to get a demo egg. That's the egg that like I will be using to cook, and after that, when I'm done, for one day, you take it away, and you get it at a crazy discounted price. And uh, usually they're sold out by now. I think they do have a few left, so we'll so Dave, Dave um, wants to know, uh, well, he asked why we were cooking with electric. And it's because they don't offer gas here. Uh, but he wants to also know, this stage, it was Brandon. Um, he also wants to know if you would prefer gas and what really is the difference? Uh, I Gas, I think, um, well, I say think. The, the experiences I've had cooking with gas are that you can control the temperature considerably better. Uh, because you can see that the triple flame with, with like this stove is way hotter. Way hotter. Then the electric stove that we were using before. The oven is way hotter. Mm -hmm. So this takes this cast iron skillet, that thing right there, from cold to searing hot. And like, seriously guys, 90 seconds. Uh, with gas, you get that nice warm bring up a temperature. And once you get your flame set, it's just, it's just better. Joseph said Deltona don't have gas either. Deltona stabs people to death in uh, Burger King stuff. <laughs> so you got that to worry about. Deltona does do, oh, Deltona does a lot of stuff. Deltona mm -hmm. grows mad. Who knew meth was like a drug that grew in the ground? Yeah. In Deltona, that's, the where old that's where you pluck it. So check this out. Look what's happening already. Wow. Let's get over so you can get the light on there. Check that out. It, it on Look at that beautiful color we're already getting. So believe it or not, we can reduce I'm we can reduce the We can reduce this heat on that and let that sit. We'll try that in a second and kind of see where we are with our sweetness. We didn't want it too sweet because we want the sage to really shine. When we throw our sage in there, mix it a couple times, it's really gonna just flower right up and you'll be able to like, okay, that's perfect. And we're gonna get these crispy pork chops going right now. Okay, pork chops. Yep. So this is a really easy technique that we've used a thousand times on the show. And it's basically, we're gonna use our basic breading, which is flour, egg wash, and then panko breadcrumbs, and then into our hot pan. Okay, super easy technique, all right? So basically what you have here is being taken away by a UFO. <laughs> My lights are flashing. 100 being taken away by a UFO. Baldwin Park has uh, tragically given us no AC and flashing lights. All right, so let's get our chops seasoned up. Yep. 
Look how big and thick this are. Woo! These are big daddies. Cray. All right, salt. Good liberal salt. All right. Pepper. I like letting these get to like just at room temperature. I don't like cooking, like pulling them right out of the fridge and cooking them. I like to kind of have them. For some reason, I just think it makes them better. It could be How a much myth. do each of those weigh? This is probably about a... This is probably 12 to 16 ounce pork chops. Kathy said it's time to move. We ain't moving. That is for Sorry. sure not happening. We're gonna fix the AC. Mm -hmm. Hard to find a neighborhood like this. Yeah, it's the pretty, whole neighborhood. Pretty so cool pretty. place. All right, some more salt and pepper. Now, when I get through salt and pepper in these, I am gonna go ahead and put my pan back on the heat. Mike said they have plenty of gas in Cracktona. Do they really? Yeah. They were probably the, hoping somebody. That's the trade I guess you gotta make stage. for. Uh, that's the trade you gotta make for almost getting murdered every day. <laughs> so God bless you. Okay, so what are we making for people just joining? Just tuning in, we're doing our crispy pork chops. We have our fennel bulbs roasting in the oven with some garlic and olive oil. I'm gonna show. I'm All gonna right. Show. Those are getting nice. Close it up. Cause you're losing my heat. Sorry. Oh, God. Sorry, I can't open the oven. You're adding like five minutes of cooking time every time okay. you do that. It's all okay. the heat comes out. It's no, fine. it's not. Life's okay. I'll slap you as soon as we turn this camera off. <laughs> You're making me drink. <laughs> no. This heat's making this hot. I'm mad. All right, here we go. Pork chop in the flour first. In the flour. Flour first. People make this mistake a lot. They'll go to whatever. Because what we're going to do when we hit it with this egg wash is we're basically creating a glue that we're gonna to use to stick our breadcrumbs to our chop. And that is gonna look like, voila! Look how pretty that how is. How beaut, that is beaut! I love that Marissa is uh, dedicated and watching us while she eats dinner at like Texas Roadhouse. That's awesome. So right into our picture. So just stay right there. I am. I'm coming your way. Another chop into the flour, into the uh, egg. Kathy wants to know if this is convection. Yes, it is, Kathy, but I don't know if we are using the convection. I don't know if we are either, to be honest with you. I'm going to mash some blueberries while you're doing that. Let me get right behind you there. Okay. Wow. Look at that. Those okay. are the biggest thing pork chops yeah, ever. Yeah, I only have to do one more than that because uh, I don't think I can. And you don't want to ever crowd the pan when you cook stuff like this. Just It'll make your meat steam. And who likes steamy meat? <laughs> Nobody. Well, I'm Nobody. sure. I'm sure that's a you kink. You better stop, dude. I'm, I'm tired sure, of it. I'm sure it's a kink. I'm somebody. tired of your like ways. <laughs> your language has become, has become so coarse. Your father is going to be absolutely. He's not watching. Oh, he's yeah, terrified. Right now. Terrified by your lifestyle. Okay, so. Let me wash my hands real quick. You keep an eye on that. Yeah, that looks so good. We have to back up. This is an extra large cast iron skillet, guys. It doesn't look like uh, they're huge, but they are giant. It is big. Now look, here's a cool thing. Look at that already. Already getting some good brown there. And with these skillets, because of the eye, now you talk about the gas, you know the what eye. gas does? What does that mean? The eye, the, the some people call them electric burners eyes. Oh, they do. Okay. So what's going to happen is the center is naturally going to heat faster than the outside. I didn't know we were fancy. We're not. <laughs> uh, it's the word eye. It's really nothing fancy about it at all. Um, so you will see when I turn this up, you're going to get that one spot where it's going to So what you do at that point, if you see that, is just kind of turn your heat down a little bit and just let them cook on the top a little bit longer. You know, you don't have to sear them like super quick, but you can see it ain't going to take long because we have that butter in there. Butter. All right, so let's just set, let those sit. Let's give this a taste real quick. Okay. I'm about to add some sage to that. I'm gonna add to our calorie count. Oh. That's like good right now. A little tart. Yeah, oh, Mike said put those blueberries over some vanilla ice cream, and I said yes, you are correct. Did you just put sage in there? I did. Oh, that's so good. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're gonna put that over some vanilla ice cream. Did you just put sage in there? I did. It is a blueberry steak sauce. I can't, Kathy. I can't on this. I I can only do it when I have my. <laughs> oh, it's ah. happening next week. Ah, stop doing that. 
It's happening next week. Oh. Happy next week. It needs a little bit more. Sage? Yeah, that's so good. Okay, cut it. It's a little tart. For the people that haven't seen you cut it before. So it's a little tart. So what we're making, we're making blueberry sage sauce. It's got a little bit of balsamic vinegar. I haven't put any salt and pepper or salt in there yet either. I'll tell you another thing you could do. If you want this to kind of have a real savory feel, rather than using water in there like I did earlier, you could put chicken stock in. And the chicken stock will give it that really good savory. But we're going to have plenty of savory in this dish. We don't really need this to be any more savory than ever, or than it already is. So we're going to get it. We do want a good sage Daniel just made his first trip to the dispensary today. Oh, cool. Did he want that to be public knowledge? <laughs> well, I read it. <laughs> All right. Out loud. Okay, it's so fine. It's legal now. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. I'm going to taste it. You didn't even offer it to me. You're surly tonight because it's hot in the house. Oh, man. Oh, you can totally taste it. Yeah, yeah. It's great, right? Mm. So we're going to put a little bit more brown sugar in there. Yeah, just a touch. Part. There we go. Just to take the tart this way. Very bright. The blueberries are naturally a little tart, so you do want some. Uh, Can we look at the bottom of this? Yeah, sure. So we have our pork chop searing. Great color there. You over there in that one part. No big deal. Wow, that thing is really. Why is that doing that? That's crazy. It's the eye, baby. Yeah. So let's do that. Let's... What are you doing that? Daniel is sending Andrea over to grab him a pork chop. Oh, because I didn't have uh, both burners on, because I'm a moron. That's why, because that middle one got like that hot, and that's why I did it. That's all right, we're fine. Because here's the thing, this is the top side. We're gonna put it in the oven. We're gonna get this bottom good and done. It's gonna get good and crispy, and then when we serve them, we'll flip it over. That'll be fine, is that gonna change the, the... I'm not mad at you. Like, I'll cook, I'll eat whatever. Yeah, I know, but see, that's not what we're trying to do. <laughs> we're trying to show people how to make food that looks good on the plate and taste good too. Okay, so we're done for a second. We're going to let that sear off. You want to come over? We're going to let that sear off, and we're going to put those in the oven. Stop beckoning me, for real. What, what would you have me do? Just have you sit there and stare at that and eat all the blueberries? <laughs> so is that good. is that what you is that the plan? Tonight? Well, somebody just said that uh, we understand that cooking is like the end game here, but Tori's witty comments is what brings them back. Yeah, because one person said that doesn't mean the entire room feels that uh, way. Won, I will tell you. You won 59 pork chops. <laughs> no, they're not dead. They're not, they're not dead yet. They're fine. All right, so we're going to put them in. All right. Boom. Okay, we're putting them in with our funnel. Yep. Oh, you can smell, you can smell that. I think the fire department's <laughs> Nah, they're fine. So... So we have our chops in. So if you're just tuning in tonight, yep. uh, welcome to Prime Temp Kitchens, How Tuesday. We appreciate you tuning in tonight. By the way, you can find all the stuff we've done, past episodes, at uh, ptkradio.com, yep. which is our awesome site. You can learn more about uh, what I've done and do. Uh, Heather McPherson, my partner on the show, her bio is up there, and you can get her cookbooks there as well. Uh, all the episodes, all 36 episodes are there. They're awesome. We made everything from like last week's bon me sandwiches all the way up to... Mm -hmm. Uh, just like spaghetti and meatballs, in-house pasta, our own dumplings. Also some cool cheats in there as well, which is shortcuts to make great food without going through all that technique of like, you know, what you see on TV, you know. We're just kind of keeping it simple for you. What's up? <laughs> I'm just reading all the stuff coming up. It's fine. Keep talking. That's fine. That's, that's, <laughs> doesn't affect when I'm doing show at all. You're just laughing in the background for no reason. Perfectly fine. It's fine. <laughs> uh, Cloud Chaser, our friends over at Crooked Can. Yep. This is their Hefeweiss beer. This is called, uh, like I said, it's called Cloud Chaser. Uh, they're a very good brewery. The guy who runs the company, and I think they have a brewery out there, is the man. Super cool guy. So um, on April 21st, yeah. we are going up to Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Yes. We're going to Gloria Gaynor's um, vacation home. Yeah. And we are going to cook at 7 o'clock on Facebook Live mm -hmm. on April 21st. And it's probably, we're probably going to have Gigi pick the dish. Yeah, and i got to find out what that is. Because I don't, I don't know what she likes. Oh, whatever. no, no, she, no. We're going to throw it at you that day. It's probably going to be salmon. She no. loves salmon. She we, likes salmon. And we never made salmon on the show before. We almost made it this week because believe it or not, this blueberry, this blueberry glaze that we're making actually goes very well with salmon. Actually, that glaze goes damn near well with anything. Yep. Uh, beef, I don't know how well it would work, but I'm telling you straight up, it is really good. It would go on fish, it would go on chicken, 
it would go on pork. It goes quite well with all of that. So that little glaze is easy. It's blueberries, a little bit of brown sugar, balsamic vinegar, salt, and some sage at the very end. They would like to know what you were doing with this. That pork chop? What's happening in there? I'm gonna let it get to room temperature and feed it to my dog. <laughs> Worms and all. <laughs> Did you see those um, videos that they they take, well this was Walmart, um, that they took Walmart pork chops and they put it in there and they poured Coke on it and the worms crawled out oh, of it. Oh, stop. You can't really say that because we don't know if that's true or not. I, where did you see that? On Facebook. Yeah, okay. So where on Facebook? At uh, fakenews.worldstar.fake? I watched it. Yeah. It's fine. Correct. <laughs> I got a little buzz and yeah. no telling what's coming yeah. out of the Right, mouth. yeah. You shouldn't, yeah. Oh, they want to talk about the BHs hanging on our walls. Uh, yeah, this, I don't know if you've, uh, that's not back BHs, there. That's back over there. Uh, also, a couple other things. Uh, big thanks to Mike Oliver Holmes for supporting the show. Also, Porky's Barbecue. So, Porky's and Apopka, old school southern style, one of my favorites. Best sides in, in the, I'm telling you, man, the sides are amazing. The, the, he does the pork right, cooks it, doesn't slather it in sauce, gets it just right. Go out there. He has a bison burger now. I call it the Buffalo Bill Burger because uh, he asked us to do that. Go get that bison burger. It's delicious. Everybody eats it, loves it. I so, agree, Kathy. Uh, so grab those guys. Porky's is an old school sponsor of uh, us, a lot of things Real Radio, so we really appreciate Steve's uh, uh, helping us out. And if you haven't been to Porky's in downtown Apopka, you got to go. Very good. Old school Southern barbecue, delicious. Nancy said that we should have named it, uh, This Little Piggy Went to the Market. This Little Piggy Went to the Market? Why would I name it that? It's a bison burger. <laughs> that doesn't. She was probably talking about something else, but I might have a tiny buzz right well, now, and I'm just reading. Line. Great so, beer, okay. uh, George, I know. All right, let's check our funnel real quick. Okay. So we're still getting some good color down there on the funnel, and we're going to be a couple seconds, so we just got to hang out. Now, I'll tell you another thing, too. So tonight we were going to do, and I actually may do this off the air. I didn't want to fire up the food processor tonight just because of getting it out and making it all happen and stuff. But we have some leftover sweet potatoes from Easter, and this is a really good time. Like, we've eaten all the ham. By the way, Tori and I came up with an idea. Somebody needs to make an Easter ham deli meat. Like, the deli meat is Easter ham, like leftover ham. They make the best sandwiches in the world. Well, so we've we been, charge 15%. Yeah, you're right. We've been eating those all week. So, But we do have leftover sweet potatoes. And what's really good is, so take those sweet potatoes, heat them up in the microwave, whatever you want to do in the oven again. Yes, right? then. Put them into your food processor. A little bit of cream. Cayenne pepper, believe it or not, smoked paprika, right? A little it's bit of sweet. butter, and then bring that into it. Just get that swirly. And that's a great puree, and it looks awesome in the plate. You can do a little smear, so your chop is there with your fennel bulb but your nice blue sauce with some sage on top as a, as a, uh, as a little uh, a garnish. Absolutely awesome. Um, <laughs> I'm just reading that sounds delicious, babe. Yeah, what are you reading? Just tell me. <laughs> Nothing, I'm not telling you. No, no, ask, is there questions? The Bicentennial Burger, that sounds good, Paul, yeah. but he picked a Buffalo Bill Burger. Who even knows it? What? I. It doesn't have anything Don't, to do with whoa, PT. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Do not. <laughs> I know say who Buffalo Bill Who's that? Ding, 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 ding. They know. They do know. He was like the king. Yeah, uh, what else do we have going on? Um, so we're going to do that on the 21st. Uh, we are going to, what, what's the other thing we were working on? Tori, we had something Why else? Why is smoke pack paprika so much better? Uh, because it's smoked. Um, it's just delicious. There you go, Jordan. I mean, I, I, I discovered smoked paprika about three years ago. Hey, Ben said that he needs a good recipe for shepherd's pie. That's what I tried to talk you into making tonight. I, I found smoked paprika about three years ago and have not stopped using it. It is absolutely delicious and I put it in a lot of stuff. It's one of the key ingredients to that chili that I make that's so good. Love it. It adds everything. Honestly, instead of using, like, just sprinkle that on your deviled eggs, by the way. It's the best. Daniel said it's the buffalo dill <clears throat> burger. Buffalo dill burger? Yeah. So, that doesn't help the show, really. You mouthing nasty words behind the camera as I sit here and wait for my food to cook. Uh, Carol loves a little heat with her sweet potato. Um, also, oh, by the way, so this weekend coming up, uh, for you guys who are Monster fans, Carlos is going to be at Habit Burger on South Orange Avenue, right? And we're doing a contest, I think from 12 to 2, he'll be there, right? Yep. And when you come down and you buy a burger, by the way, the burgers are absolutely delicious. I, I love the damn Habit your, Burger. Your favorite new burger, right? Yeah, Very, oh, totally. It's delicious. So for every time you buy a burger at Habit, by the way, 
Just go down and support. Half the money goes to Second Harvest Food Bank, whom we love. They're actually going to be on our show coming up this Friday. Uh, Second Harvest Food Bank is pairing up. They're trying to make, raise some money with Habit, which I think is a great partnership. And, of course, we love Second Harvest. So get out there and support Carlos and buy a burger and get that money to Second Harvest because they're good people. Go out there and support Second Harvest. That's right. Absolutely. What else you got there? Um... They want to know what the difference is between sweet paprika and smoked paprika. Well, it's the difference of a football and a basketball. They're two utterly different products. Any other questions? Will you touch their tip? I will. There we go. Not unless that's the person that asked that ridiculously bad question. Because <laughs> if that's the case, I don't want to touch you at all, nor talk to you. Or be around you in any way, shape, or form. Okay, oh, so World Food Festival. Yeah. Dude, you gotta go to that thing next year. So we talked about it a lot going into uh, into the show this week and the monsters. Man, it was unbelievable. The food was delicious. So if you that thing comes around next year, which we are gonna do it again, there's no question. It was slammed, but it was awesome. I had some fresh pad thai, had a Thai taco, had some pierogies, had some borscht. Had some kielbasa. It was awesome. Loved it. So get out there next time uh, when that thing rolls through. It's a lot of fun. So when are we going to do a Big Green Egg episode? I mean, I've done the turkey. That's yeah. on our YouTube channel. Yeah, but that's not like Big Green Egg like they're talking about. I did the... What you do when we had um, everybody out here? We did that tri-tip. Yeah, the tri-tip. Remember, we did that quick little video on tri-tip. And that's what we're making at the Big Green Egg Fest, by the way, guys. We're using our egg to make those beautiful tri-tips. And we're gonna make these little sliders, and we're using Bingo Bakery. And oh, Sarah man. Lee has that brand new artisano bun, that little bowl. or that roll, that little dinner yes. roll. It's so good, dude. We're gonna make a little, a little onion, some like a little onion cherry compote kind of marmalade kind of thing on top. It's gonna be good, real Justin, good. Justin, quit judging. Who's judging? For what? Just whatever. Judge? Is he judge crazy? Yeah. Oh, why would he do that? that I'm is, just lying. He's not. That doesn't make any sense. Um, right, they so want what? me to paint your head green. Why would they do that? Well, I think they're talking about the big green egg. Yeah, that's not going to work at all. While you cook on the big green egg, we'll paint your head green. Mm, no. No? I, right. I'm not a big fan of that idea either. Tried, Sean. Sorry. Yeah, can't do that. Um, let's see what else we have. We, did we have something? Oh, so we're working on a Cinco de Mayo gig. And we'll have the hopefully have the answer this week. We found this really killer brewery that we, we absolutely love. And by the way, while we were out last night recording uh, your show, your podcast, called Pretty Little Pints, which you can go and find online, Pretty Little Pints. Oh, we had Christophe Jean in who, with us, who I think right now, besides another person, <laughs> is the probably one of the funniest guys in Orlando right now. He is a really unique up-and-coming comic in Central Florida, whom we love supporting because he's really an odd, fun guy. His comedy is awesome, and he's going to be on Pretty Little Pints with the guys. Yeah, I think the Jackie. episode comes out Wednesday. Yeah, Jackie and Tori did a little interview with him last night. We were at the Thirsty Topher over here in Winter Park, mm -hmm. uh, kind of loving it up and uh, enjoying ourselves in that area. By the way, if you haven't kicked over there, great beer. Thirsty awesome Topher is fun. Awesome Jimmy Lobar. tied one on last night. Had to carry him to Hawkers, <laughs> give him some food, and then bring him home and put him in bed. <laughs> How much damage did we do at Hawkers last night? By the way, Asian street food, if you haven't been there, it's awesome. We love them. No, yeah. None of these people pay for this stuff. We're just kind of giving you good recommendations of places we love. Um, Derek, hush. That's oh, by the way, uh, we want you guys to support places like East End Market. I saw a story today that oh, Gideon totally. from East End Market, that's that good cookie company that you love there. They just bought some extra ability to make more cookies. That place is exploding. Hopefully we can tell you more about that coming up. Domu there uh, is a state recognized, I think actually top five, maybe even number one, ramen restaurant in the entire state of Florida. This so entire good. little area we're on with Corinne Drive here. Audubon Park. All the way up to Blue Gardens to where we are right here. That mm -hmm. strip of land. Man, we, there's some from Bluebird Bake Shop all the way up to Domu uh, to Red Light Red Light. I mean, just some really interesting, awesome food. Easton Market has hearth. They have um, Tonda Corrente, the cheesemonger there with that incredible feta. That farm feta is genuinely one of the best things ever. Is that the one with the thyme or the rosemary? Oh yeah, it's, oh, it's, it's so good. It's otherworldly. I mean, it is a game-changing cheese, it really is. And then of course our friend Emily Rankin, who owns Florida & Co, that has one of the better banh mi sandwiches, my inspiration for we last week. We may try to do a PTA 
gig there. Yeah, I'd love to do it there because I mean they have everything you need and they're really good people. Free hand goods there. Uh, we have uh, what's the coffee company in the back there? How could I not remember that? Oh gosh, I have to remember that. That's killing me. Have you me. tried Chroma? No, you know what? Chroma's out there by Canvas. Chroma and like out by Lake Nona, that whole area, we haven't tried it yet. Is it good? John wants to know. Yeah, they said it's delicious. Uh, John wants to know if you've tried grills. <laughs> what happened at grills, Daniel? So we went to grills uh, on the water. Uh, and this is unfair. On OBT. This is unfair, but I'll say it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I think we've kind of documented this on the show. Like, I had a really bad run with people spilling stuff on me. And I had an entire 16-ounce glass of water spilled into my lap. And the server was new and young. And by the way, just for the record, I, I, it's important I'd be transparent here. The owners have emailed me and asked me to come out and give them another chance. And, and they're good guys. They really are. They run a good business. This was like literally four days open. And these things happen. It just happened to me. And a lot of happened. times. And it was so funny. They, she spilled 16 ounces of ice cold water uh, directly into my crop. <laughs> I mean, do not pass go. And it was so cold Don't outside. take a left. Hey, Amanda. 16 ounces freezing cold water into my crotch. And like Tori said, it was probably 50 degrees outside. <laughs> and this was the response. This was the response. Was... And then she ran and away. Then, and then she just left. <laughs> she just... She just walked off. And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. But my crotch is frozen. So I'm going to need something, like a hot towel. And for the life of me, I don't know what happened. There's just one of those times where it broke down. and They just wanted to ignore the situation. It, I understand. It was, They were brand new. It was their opening weekend. They spilled some stuff in your lap. It just took forever, Tori. How long did it take to get somebody over there with a towel? Be, and be honest. <laughs> Was it 15 minutes? <laughs> it probably was. I was talking to TC and Daniel. And yeah, but the food had already got there. Everybody was ignoring you because the situation was I was, was scourged different. at that point. I, I was soaking wet. Nobody wanted to be around me. <laughs> we just turned all of our chairs towards each other and left you out until right. they brought you some towels. Yeah, which was fair. Let's face it. I mean, that was Hey, they right. want to know if you'll cook some ramen. Why would I do that? On oh, that? I guess we could do ramen. What? Are you object to ramen? Look at that. See where see the brown we're getting on our fennel leaves? Mm -hmm. Chops are kind of bubbling on top. We've got about five minutes left on those chops. We'll pull those out. Okay. We'll let those cook a little bit more. By the, while they're cooling down and kind of resting, the fennel will continue to cook. Because the cool thing about the fennel is we can put it right on the plate. Now, like I was saying earlier about the sweet potatoes, um, don't be afraid to use your leftovers in creative ways. The funny thing is, remember that the tenderloin we used last week to make the banh mi sandwich? We still have it in a, in a bag in there to cook and cut for sandwiches or cube it to put in like a hash or something like that. We try to use everything we can um, to uh, to cook here on the show. We don't try to waste anything. We're gonna use those stems from the fennel to make a little soup or some sauce or something. Yeah, that'll be great. Yeah, um, yeah Amanda, I've been to Grills in Rockledge and it was really, really good. And yeah. this is really, really good. The food tastes great. It was just opening night. The service was yeah, yeah. That, well, a little sketch. It just, you know, it was, it, the food was good. Mm -hmm. You know I mean? When the food came out, it was good. So I'm going to give them props, you know, when it, when it all came down, uh, and I'm sure they got all together, and we'll take them up on their offer eventually and go out and do that. Also, I want to tell you guys this now, because for sure it's coming, uh, when is one of those things we're kind of working out, but we are turning Primetime Kitchen into a food television show. Where at? It's going to be on WUCF. It's going to be on PBS. <gasps> PBS! So this is with Cookie Monster. This is definitely happening. Uh, we had a production meeting the other day. Uh, we tried to get the episode shot a couple weeks ago, uh, but you know uh, budgets are, t are tight, and to get a production staff out there was a little weird. So we reconfigured the way we're going to shoot it, and we think you guys are going to like it. It's going to be kind of like this, a little silly, informative, and the whole idea of the show is to tell you the culinary history of Central Florida. Yeah, it's you know, going to be awesome. You know, we learned last week on my show, on the Jim Culver show, three to seven Fridays, that you know Florida is still the number, I think, second or third biggest beef producing uh, state in the U.S. So we still have, it's a massive part of our culture is cultivating beef. So, you know, we're going to cover that. Seafood, of course, we're going to cover that. Plus tons of fresh vegetables and other stuff as well. So. Hey, real quick, um, what's what should the internal temperature be on the pork chops to cook a medium like we like it? Once. 60, I think, somewhere in that world. Um, a couple of people asked if 145 was sufficient. Yeah, that'll do. Yeah? Yeah, here's the thing. It ain't going to kill okay. you. Okay. 
Here's what we want. Here's the secret. We want that other side to be perfect. Yep, a little dark. Oh, that's real dark. I think I got my pan too hot in the middle. So we're gonna have to just plate those like that and just show you how we do it. Yeah, that's fine. We're gonna cook them different next time and make them right. That's a little, little well, too much, right? Well, I mean, it's, they're right. They're not. Well, I like a little char on That's fine. Okay. We're gonna get those going right there. And okay. actually, you know what, we can broil these because they're done. Okay. So we're gonna go ahead and get those broiled and get some color on them. Just we're to get, get the tips? Plated. Yeah, we're gonna get these things plated and get it going. Yeah, that'll be great. So our little blueberry sauce, if you're just tuning in, this is our blueberry sage sauce. It's muddled blueberries, a tiny bit of water, right? So literally two tablespoons, probably about a tablespoon and a half of brown sugar, salt, pepper, um, and some fresh sage. And that offers us a really unique You can kind totally of, taste the sage. Yeah, yeah, and it offers us a really unique way to provide a fruit, which is a seasonal fruit with these berries, and do it in a savory manner so we get some great different flavors on our plate. Yeah, they, they do look good, Brandon. I don't know. He's being a little judgy on his... Um, no, they're not. His, they're done. They're uh, no, no, no. We, we like them like that, though. They no, look great well, to everybody else. I don't, I don't like them like that. Okay. Because they should be evenly brown all the way across with no black. And those are black. But this is a real cooking show, and sometimes like that does happen. We're not serving these restaurant customers. We're showing you the techniques of how this happens. And sometimes... Sometimes it's black cook, in the middle. Sometimes it cooks a little hard on one side because we don't have like a professional kitchen. But really, the techniques are still completely applicable. By the way, when you're cooking these chops, you don't have to find these big old chops like this. These are going to plate nice, and they're going to eat. We're eating this for dinner tonight. So when we're all done, that's what we're having for dinner tonight. Uh, if you do enjoy the show, please like and share if you don't mind. Uh, get as many shares out there as you possibly can. It really does help us out a lot when we go to kind of keep the show going. We're trying to secure some, uh, some advertisers, maybe some grocery stores or something, so that we can get this provided and provide you guys a cool message and give you access to different products that maybe you wouldn't think about as you kind of move through your normal day. Mike yeah. said, um, you probably wouldn't have this issue had you had gas. <laughs> Is this guy Mike? Uh, I love it. Why would you love that? I don't know, but... Um, He's coming at me. You're supposed to be my okay. partner in life and crime. Do a leftover show. Kathy, we were absolutely talking about that the other day, that we were just going to go in the fridge, pull leftovers out, and try to make a dish out of it. Or whatever, what's in your pantry. You right? said try. <laughs> well, we would make a dish out of it. Your pork chops are a little dark. Tori. <laughs> it's you so up, hot in here. I'm you, okay, you, though. You sleep in the car tonight. That's fine. It's Where got AC. Conditioning. <laughs> <laughs> we are sweltering. It is literally 83 degrees in this kitchen. You right are now. a little red tonight. Am I red? Yeah. Are you going to um, separate the blueberry skin? No. It cooks down. You're fine. What do you separate the blueberry skin? Well, they wanted to know if you were gonna, um, if you were gonna. Why are you judging people? You're dick when there's no AC. <laughs> oh, mad. No, um, you one fifty nine the chops. That's impossible. <laughs> hey, Pat. Cool. Let's do it. This is ready. Mm, that let's get, good. Let's get these cracking. Oh, look at the color. Not bad, huh? Mm, yeah, that was well, that's right. Forty. <laughs> Pedals, so. Oh, did you watch Wild Country? Who, me? Yeah, of course we did. It was and great. did you like it? Oh, are you kidding? It was awesome. Where does it want to sit The uh, The Bhagwan Sri Rajneesh, who is the known... Dude, that dude died at like 50 what? 58. 57, 58? Mm -hmm. That was crazy, crazy times. Yeah, he, uh, he, was, uh, he was an interesting cat. They brought him up on federal charges, all kinds of fun federal charges. Let's look at this. And uh, his friend, or his uh, girl, Cherie, or whatever her name is. Thanks, Lori. Thanks for calling our show cool. So we have our, so what we have here is this. Back up a little bit so everybody can see. I, okay, I am tired and over oh you being so damn demanding I, tonight. You see these? <laughs> Do you? Go. Go, I don't want to see it anyway. Okay, uh, so we have our roasted film. Okay. Delicious, beautiful color. So it'll give us a very light kind of licorice. It's going to be crispy and delicious. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some of our fennel. They love hearing the sizzle, by the way. Yeah, you like that? A little sizzle? Yep, that's why we're I'm going to, We're going to put some of our fennel bulbs with that nice char right in the middle. That's a little too much. All right. Oh, and these do have, man, you can smell that like real licorice-y flavor. It's like really, really awesome. So we want that color on there like that. Thanks, Tammy. Tammy's got my back. Tammy. Tammy Williams. Oh my God. Is it delicious? That is so good. Why are you teasing me right this second? Wow, what a unique flavor that is. 
Mm. Seriously, how crazy good is that? That's delicious. Oh, man. The edges get crispy and they get a little mm. salty. That's great. And they, I mean, I'm serious. That is absolutely wonderful. So, let's Look at the this. blueberries, though. Oh, yeah. Can't wait for that to happen. Charred fennel and charred pork chops, LOL. Yeah, so. We set our pork right on top? Yep. Okay. We have our... <laughs> they said they can make their meal out of just roasted fennel. They love it. And this is our blueberry sauce with the sage. Mm. Which gives us some really good color on the plate. And all of our meat. You don't have to do it. it you know, it probably won't take a lot, but you know what? You just want to make That's sure. That's an interesting color. Um, That's that vi deep violet yeah. color. And what we want to do is take a nice little sprig of sage. Put it right on top. Babe, I love it. And there we have our pan-seared crispy pork chop with roasted fennel and our blueberry sage sauce with a little bit of balsamic vinegar. And that is going to be a, a beautiful, herby, effervescent, fruity, semi-sweet, crispy bite with that beautiful pork fat. If you buy pork, please don't trim the fat off of it. My God, don't do that. That's why you eat pork, that beautiful fat. Just That's what you love. When you eat a barbecue sandwich, the fat is what you're eating that you love so much. The flavor and the meat just carried by the fat. So please, when you buy pork, if you're gonna kinda, if you're gonna do one of those things where you're just kinda, that's your cheat night, God, man, just leave that little bit of fat on there. Trust me, guys, it's not gonna kill you. You can run it off. Don't cook it if you're not going to eat it the way it should be eaten, which is that beautiful piece of fat there. Yes, baby. Um, we need to talk about April 21st. For the people that just joined, um, we are going to do a How Tuesday, but on a Saturday night with mm -hmm. my friend uh, Gigi, Gloria Gaynor. And, um, we're we going to do that from her condo in Myrtle Beach. Yes, we are. So we're, we're going to go live. She's actually going to be part of the show. We don't know what we're cooking yet, but uh, please set an appointment. That's April 21st, 7 o'clock. It's on a Saturday night. Not a Tuesday night this time, because it is a special edition. So we would love for you to join us. Actually, if you go to our Facebook page, Primetime Kitchen's Facebook page, Tori has a, a banner up there. You just can like it. Events. Events. And mm -hmm. we can already have, I think we already have like a, a couple hundred people kind of checking it out. So if you don't mind, join us. It's going to be a great time. And look for this recipe at ptkradio.com. This video will also be up a little bit later. Tonight, we did our crispy pan-seared pork chops, finished in the oven. We did our blueberry sauce with balsamic vinegar and sage and we did a roasted fennel simply roasted with a little bit of olive oil salt pepper and garlic and it is delicious so Amanda, thank you. it tastes really really good it has a little bit of a licorice flavor but i tell you i almost don't even want to say that because people are like ah, i hate it because when you no. eat that it is so faint it is but this crispy those crispy edges like that are absolutely delicious they are so try cooking fennel ones man why not just mix it up you yep, know for sure Big thanks to Wassie's Meats. We appreciate it, guys. That's W-A-S-S-I-S.com. -S -S Join us for the Big Green Egg Fest, April 28th, Indian River Campgrounds down in Vero Beach. It is going to be a blast. I'll be cooking out there along with my beautiful wife, Tori. We're going to have some cool stuff, not only from Primetime Kitchen, but the Jim Colbert Show as well. You guys come out and hang out with us. It's your opportunity to drink and eat all day long for one number. By the way, the price is extremely affordable considering... Uh, what you get. Not only can you do that, you can also buy your big green egg that day. And on Mondays, Frank and his son, well, they deliver them right here in Orlando and even set them up and give you a little tutorial to get you going your way. So guys, I can't thank you enough for turning into the show or tuning into the show. We appreciate it. Again, ptkradio.com. If you don't mind, like and share this video and support our sponsors. Uh, they're good people. They work hard for their money as well and they offer great services. Mike Oliver Holmes, Porky's Barbecue and Apopka. And of course, right here at Primetime Kitchen, we really do appreciate it. And don't forget to visit wassies.com. And you should go over there and check out the brand new expansion. It is amazing. Well, guys, we'll see you next week right here on Primetime Kitchen's How Tuesday with another great recipe for you to have great food in your home. See you guys. Bye, guys.